it, uh, it, with a backdrop of inflation. Uh, you see it certainly in the prices of, of schools and colleges, public or otherwise. Uh, but it was a sign that maybe things are getting a little better, or at least the rate of increase we're seeing in inflation now at only a 6.3% annual rate is a sign better days are here to come. That in other words, the, the rate of increase is slowing down. That had all the major market averages advancing. In case of, you're keeping track of this right now, it had been eight down weeks in a row for the Dow, seven down weeks in a row for the S&P 500, both uh, dramatically disrupted this past week. For the month of May, by the way, and we have only one more trading day. Remember, there's no trading day on Monday for Moral Day. But on the 31st Tuesday, the last trading day, now the Dow and the S&P 500 have indeed turned Positive. So what to make of all of that and where we go uh, from here, let's go to Phil Flynn, the Price Futures Group senior analyst, Fox News contributor as well, Scott Martin, uh, Kingsview Asset Management, and Gary Kalpom, Kalpom Capital Management. Gary, ended with you, begin with you on what the markets were telling us. Uh, you, you know, uh, this was one of those rare weeks where every single day the markets were advancing, at least the Dow was, on the belief that maybe we're through the worst of it. Are they naive or are they prescient? I think what we have is a combination of, uh, believe it or not, in less than two months, the NASDAQ had dropped almost 25% and the S&P 18%, so maybe an overshoot. Uh, but the PCE inflation rate for the uh, first time in 16 months actually ticked down. So I think maybe By the, the way, market... that's a personal a consumption expenditure, right? You know this stuff. You got it. But it's a key gauge that I know the Federal Reserve follows, right? Yeah, and it's it's what people spend, the actuality of it. Uh, so I think a combination of that, and you just get to the point where sellers get washed out, the short sellers in the markets are too happy, uh, so they got to put the frowns on the faces of the short sellers and, and, and get the bulls uh, all excited again. All right. uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if this is a bear market rally to start as something really good. I am still very worried about two things that are happening at the same time, and that is savings rates are plunging and credit card usage is skyrocketing while uh, even though inflation came down a little bit crb index at a new high this week and another thing with energy prices oil went into the levels where we saw when russia uh, attacked ukraine in mid-march we're not at the highs but right. we're starting to enter that fray and if we start entering 120 125 uh, all bets are off and the uh, best analyst uh, energy analyst uh, uh, Phil Flynn will uh, attest to that. And I will go to Phil. And just to, uh, for folks at home who just follow this stuff or try to, uh, when Gary talks about short sellers, those betting on stock prices declining, they've been richly rewarded, say, this past week. And the CRB, to which you referred, is the Commodity Research Bureau. It's an index, uh, a whole bunch of different commodities here uh, that has been sharply rising, did not do so in this past week, or uh, not nearly as dramatically. Phil Flynn, a big issue with inflation is gas and oil. Now natural gas, all that stuff that's been jumping. Now we're supposed to be relieved because it's not jumping as much. What, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because, hey, if, is, if we, what do we go up 17 days in a row and we finally went down one tenth of a penny? And then we hit another record uh, again, <laughs> back up in a new record. Uh, but yeah, I do think that that is some encouragement. It looks like the market's starting to level up. And it even looks like the Biden administration is even considering uh, some real changes that could actually help the situation. There were reports that the Biden administration is looking at perhaps reopening some of the shuttered refineries that, that basically some of their policies have closed down. I'll believe that when I see that, that, Phil. You know, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but we've heard these teasers yeah. before. If it doesn't happen, won't oil just keep rocketing? It will. You know, unless we change the policies we're in, Neil, I mean, we're doomed to repeat the same cycle that we're in. Right. Listen, we've we've depleted our backup reserve. We've we've sold out our strategic petroleum reserve uh, that was supposed to bring prices down. It had the opposite effect because people look at U.S. inventories. They used to say, well, you know, even though they're low, they've got all this oil in the reserve. That's not true anymore. You know, yeah, not as much. No, are, not as much. Yeah. You're right about it. Scott Martin. Uh, yeah. From a young investor's point of view, and they're the ones who got into this market late, and we're told we're we're the ones leading, getting out of this market sell-off fast. What do you tell them? Yeah, it's definitely not me. I'm not telling myself because I'm much <laughs> much more years in advance there, Neil. But I'll tell you what. After listening to the guys here so far, uh, Gary and Phil, all due respect, I'm I'm depressed. I mean, I had a a full weekend of fun planned here, and that's dashed because 
I mean, to your point, the young investor, I think, is going to be okay, Neil, because they have time. Um, they've got time in the market. They've got time to dollar cost average. They have a, hopefully a long uh, runway of income ahead of them where they'll be able to put new money in. But gosh, I mean, we work with a lot of uh, mid-aged to uh, older, say, investors who are scared. Um, they're scared about bonds. They're scared about income. And they're certainly scared about stocks. And I think the one thing you mentioned, Neil, in, in your intro that was striking to me was talking about how things are getting better. And they are. They're getting better because, granted, things got so bad, as Gary kind of put them. But isn't that kind of screwed up in a sense because of the fact that the administration and the Federal Reserve have really botched this from day one? I mean, you have an administration of President Joe Biden who doesn't know how much a pound of, pound of ground beef costs. He probably doesn't know how much a barrel of oil is, certainly doesn't know how much a gallon, gallon of gas is at the, at the tank, so at the pump. So it's just like you have an administration, you have people in control who are supposed to, I guess in quotes, take care of us or at least help things or get out of the way. And all they're doing is messing things up at every turn. And therefore, while we're seeing a bounce, it's not something that I think is sustainable as long as we have these folks in charge. You know, I haven't right. met a president yet who knew what the price of milk was, but that could just be me. Well, uh, we should change that. Yeah, we could change that. Yeah. Guys, thank you very, very much. In the meantime, we're taking a look at how.